right, so the next part, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to do an abdominal palpation. So abdominal palpation means we're feeling that abdomen, and we're trying to identify different organs and structures in there and be able to tell what's normal. I'd love to be able to tell you today that you're all going to go home and you're all going to know how to do abdominal palpation and everything's going to be great. But I can tell you abdominal palpation is definitely, it's an art. You have to get used to it, you have to do it a lot to really understand what it is you're feeling and to be comfortable saying what's normal and what's abnormal. Um, when I was in veterinary school, our first year of, of uh, school, they had said to us, all right, we're going to feel these dogs, and this is a kidney, and this is a liver, and here's the stomach. And we went, and we're all feeling, we're like, oh, I don't understand. Like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. You'll get it. And we were like, what do you mean we'll get it? Like, you, we came here, we're paying you money for <laughs> you guys to teach us how to do it. And they're like, you just got to keep doing it. You just got to um, do it repetitively. And, and it's true. You have to repetitively feel these ad their abdomen, know where things are to be able to <laughs> understand what it is you're feeling. So there's lots of things to feel in that abdomen. There's your stomach, which in reality, a lot of you guys are here today because you want to know what a stomach feels like. Because in rabbits, we're always feeling that stomach. That's the biggest thing. When you have in a rabbit emergency and they're walking in the door, one of the first things that we're doing is we're feeling that stomach. Because the number one issue that we see in rabbits is gastric stasis syndrome and there's varying degrees of gastric stasis syndrome it can be anywhere from a very mild issue to a severe life-threatening we need to go to surgery now kind of situation and to understand where i am in that spectrum if it's a mild thing and we can kind of deal with this with medications going home versus needing to stay in the hospital versus we need to be really serious about this and go to surgery i'm feeling that stomach that stomach is, is what I need to feel. Um, and so, the other things that we're feeling is we're going to be feeling our liver, the intestines, the kidneys, the bladder, and then I put plus or minus the reproductive tract if you have a, really in particular, a female that's um, not spayed. Um, so, I think I have it on the next picture here. When we're feeling for the stomach, what you're going to do is you're going to feel along the side of the, the body. You're going to feel the ribs of your rabbit. And so you can follow along the ribs of your rabbit until you kind of get to the edge of the ribs. Right behind those ribs, it'll kind of tuck right in. If you're moving your fingers along, you'll feel the edge of the ribs and it'll tuck right in. Your stomach is going to be right behind those ribs right there. So what you'll do is you kind of gently and slowly press right in that region. The stomach should feel nice and soft. It should be nice and compressible. You should basically be able to kind of gently feel it and squish it down a little bit. Rabbits, because they're always eating or should always be eating, should have some food in there. And so you may kind of feel a little bit of almost what feels like maybe a little um, really soft bean bag, almost. If you feel, and there's like nothing, like you can feel your fingers but almost touching each other, that's a stomach that's empty. That's a stomach that doesn't have anything in it. And it makes me question, well, when was the last time that animal actually ate anything? You know, that's, a, that's a, probably an animal that's been in gut stasis for a little while. Versus, if I feel around the edge of those ribs and I can't compress because I have a balloon hanging out right there and something actually feels like a balloon right there, that's a stomach that's extremely enlarged. And a really large stomach is a stomach that we get really concerned about. Because if it's really large, and it's rounded, and I can feel it be just beyond the edge of those ribs, like I don't have to push in at all into that abdomen, like I can just feel a bubble right there, that stomach is huge, and that's potentially a stomach that's blocked up by something. And that's really an emergency situation. And that's a rabbit that has to be in the hospital, because that's a rabbit that we need to start doing intensive care and intensive treatments with, Otherwise, it could potentially die because we're worried about that particular situation as a bloat situation. And bloat is where the stomach gets blocked up by something. It can be anything. I mean, it can be a ball of, you know, hair. It can be something like a piece of carpet fibers that they weren't supposed to eat. It can be, um, you know, we've had rabbits that get bloated because there's some sort of adhesion in their abdomen that's making it so things can't move through the intestines well. Lots of different things can be going on. But for whatever reason, with a bloat, things just are not moving through. Everything's backing up in that stomach. 
And the bad thing about rabbits is they can't vomit. So if a rabbit could vomit, it would solve a lot of our problems. Because if they could vomit, they could bring that stuff up. You wouldn't have a stomach that could get so severely distended. And yeah, we'd have to deal with vomiting rabbits, which wouldn't be so much fun. But it wouldn't be as much of an emergency situation. Because your stomach is only going to get so big until it pushes off on other organs, pushes off on blood supply, um, and potentially ruptures. And then you have, unfortunately, you know, if a stomach ruptures on a rabbit, it's unfortunately a rabbit that is most likely going to die. So usually I use, I will take my hands over either side of the rabbit and I will push in. Because that stomach is going to be, it's basically kind of coming down the entrance into the stomach. The esophagus is going to be entering into the stomach on your left hand side. And then the exit of the stomach is going to be on your right hand side. So it's going to be kind of right on center. So I use my hands on both sides to kind of feel in. Yeah, yes, bunnies do like to chew on everything. Um, paper is fine. We obviously don't want them sitting there and just eating all the paper in the world because you could have a problem. But if they chew up a little bit of paper and, you know, just maybe nibble on a corner here and there, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. So, and the good thing about rabbits is most of the time when they are chewing up stuff, they're typically really chewing it and grinding it into little pieces. And so, most of the time we're not having rabbits like we do with other animals like dogs and cats and ferrets that eat stuff and stuff sits in that stomach and is a real problem for them, you know, really foreign body ingestion. Rabbits a lot of times because they do a lot of that chewing action, they do make things into small sizes so we don't have as much of a problem with rabbits eating things that they're not supposed to as we do with other species. Majority of the time things will pass through okay. But you do unfortunately have times where they don't chew it up enough or something else is going on, like they're, get, they're dehydrated for some reason and they ate something and maybe they chewed it up, up enough but they're dehydrated, things aren't moving through those intestines well enough and then it blocks up, you know? So it's, it's something that, yeah, you know, they, they chew things that maybe we would prefer them not to. Um, majority of them do okay but there are ones that, yeah, it can be a, a life-threatening problem. They can, because if you have one that's over-grooming, you know, it, it certainly can, like, they can just groom, 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 and ingest too much, you know, that's the other thing. If they ingest a little bit, okay, not, not the end of the world, but if you ingest a lot, and that's, the thing with rabbits is they, when they shed, they, their fur kind of, like, holds on to that shed a bit, you know, and they don't drop it as easily as some other animals, and so there can be clumps of shed that these guys have in their fur, and so rather than getting maybe a couple little pieces of shed, they're getting, like, big big clumps of it in their mouth and ingesting it and, and being a problem, you know? So it's it's definitely an issue. And that's why feeling the stomach of a rabbit is so important because if we have a rabbit that's not doing well, it's not eating, it's not pooping, or it's lethargic, feeling that stomach is the first thing we want to know because do we have a really potentially serious issue as far as a gastrointestinal problem goes on our hands? Um, okay, and so then we always have to get to the other end of our, our bunnies, um, and we have to look at, at their little underparts. Um, so really what we're doing is we're just looking for swellings, discharge, redness, crusting. Um, we're also, when we have them on their back, a lot of times looking at the bottoms of those feet. Feet, I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at the bottom of the feet uh, for any hair loss, any redness, any scabs, Pus, that kind of stuff. Rabbits don't have nice pads like dogs and cats do. Their pads are their fur. And so if they lose that fur on the bottom of the foot for any reason, maybe because it was rubbing on inappropriate substrate or what have you, the skin is very superficial right there. It's very easy for them to have little nasty infections occur at those, those cough regions.